Hi guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video on a vintage pachinko machine. This time we're looking at a vintage Hiwa single shot, uh, probably from the late mid to late 60s. There is a, a stamp on it. Unfortunately, there's no numbers on it that I could see. Uh, interesting machine, had some, uh, some interesting things to do on this machine. I guess you could say it that way. Each, each machine uh, kind of presents a new uh, amount of challenges. Uh, first thing I want to show you though is the play field. And this, this play field was, was quite faded. The only thing that showed on it was the blue. And when we first looked at it, and it was quite dirty until we got the, uh, the dirt off of it, uh, you can see the, the other checkers in here. They're white, but the whole background is, is not white, which is what you would expect. You, you kind of expect this white here rather than this. And um, I talked to uh, Bill Cardwell. He's the guy that I get my uh, play fields from. And he said, well, that's a, a, like a tan or a gray background, which I'd never seen before. Um, I've seen solid color uh, backgrounds on pachinko machines like um, the uh, Power Roulette and Power Flash have solid color backgrounds. But this is the first time that I had seen this, this kind of gray uh, tan color, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And the customer um, wanted to have some extra color in it. So if you take a look at this, um, you can see that it's, it's, it's kind of a, a gray background with the checkerboards are nice and white. And then these are the original blue checkerboards. And then Bill put a, a, a red stripe in here to give it a little bit of color. And, it, and I think it came out really nice. Originally, this, this part of the frame had been painted um, a darker blue to match the blue of the Hiwa. Um, whoever did the painting painted over uh, a lot of stuff, which unfortunately a lot of times people do. Instead of taking these screws out, they just paint over them. Um, so uh, the customer asked if I would repaint this again with a slightly different blue. And because of, I had to take it off and sand it down and so on and so forth, um, I was able to clean all the hardware up and, and kind of get it back to the original uh, look of, of the, the nickel steel or chrome or whatever. So again, this is a single shot. You have to put a ball in here one at a time and then launch them. And I'll show you the mechanics in the back in just a second. But it came out really, really nice. I think it's a very pretty machine. So this machine has a combination of um, the tin and some brass pieces. Not a lot of plastic, really. The only plastic here is the what I call the catch area that catches the balls coming in and, and a couple of protective covers. Most of the rest of it was tin um, and some brass. Uh, the brass is is really brown when, when it, you know, in 50 years it tarnishes really bad. So that all got cleaned up. The plastic gets cleaned up. This plastic, especially this plastic right here, tends to get very brittle. You have to be very careful of it. Um, and, and there's a lot of parts here, there, and everywhere on this machine. And, and when, you know, I do my best to take pictures, especially on a machine that I'm not that familiar with. And uh, this was a challenge to put back together again. I'm glad I had a lot of pictures for it. Um, but we, we got it all wired. Um, this center attraction features three bulbs, so it lights up really nice. The problem is that the 12 volt bulbs are a little bit bigger than the nine volt or 10 volt bulbs that were originally in it. So uh, you can't get this piece that pulls the three bulbs quite in far enough for this cap to snap shut. So it, it just hangs there, but it's, it, it does not affect the, the light or anything that shines through. Um, what else on this one? Oh, <laughs> I lost this little piece right here. This is just a little um, piece of, of metal that the spring can ride up on, or I thought I lost it. So I have a wire bending tool. I got the wire bending tool out and made my own, and I was so pleased with myself, and then, of course, I found it. But uh, So that's the original, not, not the one that I bent. So it cleaned up nice. Um, this one had a little bit of dry rot on it which kind of surprised me. There's a little bit of 
dry rot right along this edge. Usually they just absorb so much water that uh, they'll get rotten, but this is, this is definitely dry rot. Um, it's not a big deal, it's, nobody ever sees it. So let me show you the way that this loads up. There's a pigtail on it for the 12 volts. So you're gonna plug the, the wall transformer in and plug this in. And pretty much with all pachinko machines, when you do put power to them, the ball out light should come on because there's no balls in the machine. So this light should come on, stay on until the condition of enough balls has been met. It's dictated by this little leaf switch here. And when there's enough balls in here, this pushes down and it will turn that light off. This goes like that. I'm sorry, it lifts up and lets the two leaves separate. So when there's enough balls, this pushes down, this lifts up and, and turns the light off. So that's the condition it would be in when, when it's got enough balls in it. So the only thing you gotta be careful with on, on this machine or any recycler for that matter is under the uh, jackpot cover, you'll see a piece. Um, this particular one is, is uh, zinc, I guess it is. Uh, not brass on the nisogens, all of this, most of this stuff is brass, but there's two fingers right at the end of the, the jackpot tray and they're down like this. And when you load this, the balls will come all the way through the system and hit those two fingers and stop. And then this tips and lets the 14 balls out. That's what you want. Make sure that the fingers are down and not up, but by default, the springs throw it down. So it really shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so these are down. You got it plugged in, and you're just gonna take, right now, just take a handful. And it went all the way through the system, and now you've got 14 balls sitting in here, and that's that would be the first win that would come out of the machine. So I'll keep putting balls in. And with any, any pachinko machine, this should be the condition. From the hopper to wherever your jackpot is, it should be just flow, flow, flow until they start to back up. If they don't make it down here, then you got a block in there somewhere and you got to figure out what that is. So I don't know if you realize what happened here, but the, this is again a recycler. So the losing balls are going to come back into this tray. When this tray has enough balls in it for the machine to become operational, it's gonna lift this rod up and it stops the flow of balls from the upper hopper. Now, when this empties and there's not enough balls in here, then this will automatically let more balls down in. So every once in a while, you'll hear the balls clatter and you'll know that they're going down. So, at this point, if you've got 500 balls, this is when you wanna dump them in. dump them in until this is this is good and full so now this is full this is full the turnaround is full it's full all the way over to here and then it's ready to drop more balls when necessary it's full down to here the jackpot it's ready to pay out for the amount of balls that are supposed to be in the machine and if you notice the ball out light is off the other thing that you want to make sure of is, and, th and this one's a little bit hard to see, it's the seesaw. It's right in this area. Let me bring the camera in so you can see it. It's right there. It's brass, made out of brass. It's this piece right here that's moving. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what you want to do is make sure that the seesaw is sitting this way, not this way. Right end up, right end up, not right end down. Make sure the right end is up. So this plastic here will catch any ball that comes in as a win, let it run down this ramp. It runs into the end of the jackpot, or I'm sorry, the seesaw. The seesaw tips, it lets the ball come out down this vertical shaft 
onto the tip of the jackpot arm. The jackpot arm is right here, not this one. It's this one inside. The weight of the ball pushes the jackpot down, and when it goes down, the jackpot mechanism will tip and let the 14 balls out. Then the whole system will reset itself, okay? So, okay, so I wanna show you the, the actual action of the machine. So this is the backside of the upper attraction. So I can just drop a ball in there. So if you, well, let me do it again. You saw will tip, which forces the jackpot arm down. This tips and lets the balls out and then the whole system resets itself. Okay, so this particular machine has a, a kind of a cool feature on it that probably you'll never see in action. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to show you the, uh, what it does. So to set it up, I'm going to keep the seesaw from tipping. And as you can see, it, it just stops there because I've got the seesaw stuck down. And I'm going to put another ball in. So in theory, if a player is playing very quickly and two balls get into a win situation at the same time, There it goes. <clears throat> the second ball gets pushed forward and this light comes on. So when, when I turn the, the machine around, I'll show you what, what, what that actually does. Okay, so, so we've got the, um, you can see the functionality of the machine and that light is on. So let me explain that. And now you can see this, this is uh, lit up. Ideally, you want the machines leaning back a little bit. So when you get this machine where you're going to, going to have it, um, you want to take a look at it on this, this side here. And, and it, you want it to lean back <laughs> uh, just a little, not a lot. Uh, but it helps keep the balls against the play field and keeps them going into the drain hole and so on and so forth. Uh, and you can do that easily if you can just go to the dollar store and buy those little felt pads with the sticky backs and put a couple of felt pads under each of the front feet and that'll that'll tend to lean it forward uh, unless the machine leans or I'm sorry leans backward uh, by itself depending on where you put it okay so you can look in the window and see the balls ready for the the jackpot so when the machine is full of balls there there is a metal plate in here in this hole and it will be covering the hole so that you actually can't put a ball in like that. When you have enough balls in there, the mechanism lifts that, that plate out of the way. So you can put a ball in and launch it. Put another ball in and launch it. There we go. So that was a win. Uh, the jackpot lights come on. Now the tulip is open. It makes for a larger target. Let's see if we can get another win here. Whoa! Now, if if the player is done, they're going to scoop their winnings out of here, but they won't leave because this light is on. So this little uh, push button lever here. When you push down on this, it forces that ball out and back into the uh, seesaw. So it turns the light off and gives you another win. So that's that's what that whole system is. But um, let me see if I can get a couple more wins out of this. This one's this one's a little difficult to win on, and the only reason I say that is because it only has one tulip. And the tulips are a wide target where the pay pockets are not. They're a much smaller target. Uh, I gotta, gotta readjust that nail, which I will do. If you do launch it too hard, it, it just swings all the way around and you get to launch it again. 